Praise God. Good to see you again here tonight. Uh, amen. We're going to quickly get into the Word of God. Uh, bless you. Some folks home from vacation. Praise God. Hallelujah. Amen. It's just good to see you all here. All right. Praise God. I uh, I asked myself this question, and uh, I guess I'm going to ask you the same question. Uh, the Bible tells us in uh, 2 Peter 3.18 that we are to grow in grace in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. That's what the Word of God says. Uh, so I asked this question tonight is, uh, do we have plan growth in our life with God okay do we have anything that we do anything that we plan anything that we know by doing these things that is going to create growth in us spiritually anybody here have a planned approach to growing in the kingdom of God anybody here tonight so I, I see no hands. So what that indicates to me then is many of us, most of us, probably all of us, really don't have any kind of deliberate plan for growth in God's kingdom for our in, for ourselves, okay? That is one reason why we are in discipleship teams, to have some format for growth, Okay? And uh, and we all the Bible teaches we are to grow. Okay, I I don't believe things happen by accident. All right, I think a lot of our walk with God has been somewhat we could term it as an accident. You know, we don't well. Some will read the Bible through for the year and they pray, but uh, there's other aspects of this that are very very important. Do we have a do we have a, a time where we listen to God? Are we hearing from God? Are we are we impacting somebody in this world, or is or are we in a in a, a shell or a, uh, this area where we the only people we have ever have contact with is other believers, you know? And so the, I really do believe that we have to become deliberate and plan. I, I in fact. I don't believe that revival is an accident either. Okay. If you want revival, you'll have revival when you pursue after God, when you seek God with all your heart. Amen. Revival will come. Uh, and I think a lot of what we've done, and I'm not trying to be critical, I'm just making statements tonight, and we need to hear what we're saying because I'm telling you, amen, we have had no real format for developing uh, these things in our life, we are we've been we can get content and come to the house of God, meeting with our brothers and sisters, worshiping God, speaking in tongues a little bit, feeling good. Amen. If we're sick, God heal us, and Amen. Go home, and and if we do have perhaps some opportunity, we may talk to somebody, maybe. And uh, and I I think uh, that probably speaks of why. We don't have a lot of growth. Not being critical, I'm just making statements. Okay. Uh, so, again, I encourage you to be involved in discipleship teams. I encourage you, you may think you have all the answers and you don't need any help, but again, it's a way to actually check yourself to see where you're at. Okay. We, we do want to develop, don't we? I mean, you y'all y'all didn't y'all y'all not still still working for seven twenty five an hour, are you? you know, how many want to work for seven twenty five an hour? How many are glad they're working for a whole lot more than seven twenty five an hour? What 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 we do, you see, is we do advance in life. We do, you know, and let me point out, we we are we do a lot as far as our physical life, taking care of. We, I mean, we have to work, don't we? We gotta, we gotta work, Leo. We gotta feed the family. That's, in fact, not to do that. The Bible says we're worse than an infidel. But again, so we we make a lot of plans. We get an education, et cetera, et cetera. But I, I really, I really don't think we actually plan growth, spiritual growth, into our life. 
Okay, okay. Y'all, y'all still with me? And so these are things that, again, we need to progress in these areas. We actually need to set goals to, amen, develop, amen. Are you content where you're at? Some of us don't know, and some of us know we want to change. And so, again, these are things that we have to address in our life. All right, I want to talk about <clears throat> hearing God for a little while tonight, all right? So if you go with me to Deuteronomy chapter 6, verse 4 through 9, we'll start with there. I had a great Bible study this morning in my home with my oldest grandson. Him and I were discussing 1 Samuel. And so from that, from my morning, early morning Bible study with my grandson, amen, and it probably was an hour. I mean, we lost, I don't know, how long was it, Bradley? I don't know either. Had oatmeal and all that kind of stuff, and I don't know what he had to eat, but we had a Bible study, and so it was neat. All right, so hearing God. Deuteronomy 6, 4 says, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. And thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy might. Yeah, I'm, I'm using the King James. And these words, which I command thee this day, shall be in thine heart. And thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. You shall talk of them when, when thou sittest in thine house, and when thou walkest by the way, and when thou liest down, and when thy, thou risest up. And thou shalt bind them for a sign upon thy hand. And they shall be as frontlets between thine eyes, and thou shalt write them upon the post of thy house and on thy gates. If you study the scripture, you know that this is the greatest commandment. The word here there in the Hebrew is the word shema. Okay, it's a verb that means to hear, to obey, to listen, to regard, to proclaim, to sound aloud. It means to hear intelligently. All right, everybody say hear intelligently. Give attention to, to be obedient. So when you hear, amen, the word of God, there should be a response from us. Okay, there should be something that takes place in us. I always encourage people. The, the message, the preaching of the word may not necessarily be right where you're at. It may not have hit your heart every time. There's preaching, but always take the time to talk to God. Don't ever just say, okay, that was, that was for Joe Blow from Kokomo. Well, then for me. No, take the time to say, okay, God, what are you speaking? What can I derive from this? How can it create growth in me? How can it move in my heart to establish me further in your kingdom? Amen. When, when the Israelites heard this hero Israel, Amen. God was simply telling them, I want you to understand something about me. Okay. I am one. Amen. And and there was to be a response to what they heard. And that response was to love God with all their heart, mind, soul, and strength. I do believe that God wants to talk to us today. Every one of us in this room. If God's not talking to us, then we need to ask him to talk to us. And when we pray, I know for years, I used to do all the praying. And God never got a word in edgewise. And then I finally learned that praying is just not me talking. It's sometimes, it is, listening to God. And I learned that I had to listen to the Lord. Praise God. And which is so important. So God wants to talk to us today. He really does. Turn your neighbor and say, he really does. He wants to talk to us. I, I think, in fact, I, I'm going to say it more strong. I believe that we need to hear from God. Amen. The Bible says to us that the Holy Ghost is a teacher. Praise God. There are things that we will learn simply by the Spirit of God speaking to us. You know, do you remember when you first came to God and, and, and people, you know, they didn't, they didn't give you a list of do's and don'ts. You know, at least I hope they didn't. Some may have. That's not the best approach because then it's just, it's just on paper. It's not in your heart. Amen. But amen. There was just things 
that you you just you said I can't do this anymore, and you really had no explanation. You can you didn't even know where it was in the Bible, but just something in you was telling you this is how I'm supposed to live. That was the Spirit of God. Amen. And again, we need to hear God. We are intelligent beings in this room tonight. We communicate. Uh, sometimes they put a label on us that we're a bunch of fanatics and crazies because we run aisles, swing from chandeliers, speak in tongues and all that stuff and, and uh, roll on the floor. At least I haven't seen me rolling recently. Amen. Maybe we need to have a rolling service. Amen. Because we just need just to keep our reputation up. Amen. But, uh, amen, we just need to get under the power of the Holy Ghost and the influence of God's Spirit. But, uh, amen, it's, we are intelligent. We are not an ignorant people. And so, therefore, when it comes to the things of God, God speaking to us, we need to hear what God is saying. Amen. We need to give attention to it. We need to be obedient. Amen. There was something that you can read in Deuteronomy 432, amen, that, that I just want to point out to you. Israel was a, a unique people. Israel was a unique, you know, there are other, other people had their gods and, and revered their gods and worshipped their gods. But the Bible says to us in 432 of, of Deuteronomy, For ask now the days that are past, which were before thee, since the day that God created man upon the earth, and ask from one side of heaven unto the other, Will there have been any such thing as this great thing is or have been heard like it? Well, what is this great thing, amen, that you, anywhere in the universe is so unique? Did ever people hear the voice of God speaking out of the midst of a fire as thou hast heard and lived? Praise, we got a God that speaks out of the fire, speaks to us, amen. Are, are you hearing me tonight, ladies and gentlemen? Amen. This is a walk with God that we ought to hear God. It ought to, it ought to bring a response to us. We ought to walk down the street just waiting for God to say, that's the one. Do that. Wait a minute, God. I'm not sure about that deal. Do it. Amen. Anybody ever had that kind of an experience where you, you, you question, you say, well, I'm not, this is a little out of the ordinary. I'm not sure I should do this. Do it. Praise God. You've got to learn how, amen, to hear from God and respond to God. That's what he's looking for from his people tonight. So let me just take a little time tonight. Reasons why we don't hear from God and why we don't respond to God. A very simple, basic Bible study. Amen. And I just, just want to point these things out. To, okay, Genesis chapter 3, verse 8. The Bible says to us, and they heard the voice of God walking in the cool of the evening. Yeah. What did Adam and Eve do? The Bible says they hid themselves from the presence of the Lord. Amen. And they were then uh, Adam would say when God said, "Where are you, Adam?" He, he would say, uh, "Well, I I heard your voice, but I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself." I one of the reasons we do not hear from God is because sin causes us to hide all right as a believer we need to actively understand that first john 1 9 is not some nice scripture that we quote to somebody that we are trying to get to repent but it's it's very important to us today if we confess our sins he is faithful and just to do what Forgive us and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. We want to hear from God. So we cannot allow, amen, sin to cause us to hide and be in fear of the Lord. Now, if you were honest tonight in this room, I would not ask for a raising of hands. But there are times that we come to the house of God with sin in our life. We, we get up with sin in our life and... Amen. And so consequently, if we hear a voice, we're, our tendency is going to be is to run and to hide. Or, or the other side of that would be, why would you even want to talk to me? I've been doing wrong, God. So, amen. It is important for you and for me, amen, to 
Hear God's voice. Amen. And if there is sin, just do what the Word of God says. Confess it. Forsake it. You'll find mercy. Amen. Amen. So that's one reason why we're not hearing clearly from God. Another one is found in Exodus 5 and 2. Amen. The Bible says in Exodus 5 and 2 that Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord? That I should obey his voice and let Israel go. I know not the Lord, neither will I let Israel go. Okay. One of the, one of the issues that we face that will corrupt God being able to speak to us, at least in, on our side, is our pride. Everybody say pride. You see, pride will cause you not to obey God. Now, there is not a person in this room that doesn't have pride. No, there's not a person in this room that doesn't have pride. In fact, pride will get us into more trouble than anything else. It'll create problems in our marriages. It'll be a problem with our neighbors. It'll create problems with other believers. Okay, and it also causes us not to hear. Now, when I'm talking about hearing from God, I'm not just talking about just your eardrum, you know, shaking because God's... I'm talking about the what the Word of God says, Shema, which is to hear intelligently and to obey. All right? That, that's what I'm talking about tonight. Praise God. So there are times that we don't hear from God because pride is, is in our heart. Amen. And pride is a... Obstacle, what you, you can read in Proverbs chapter 6, uh, it will tell us there are six things, yea, seven things that God hates. And the very first thing that it says is a proud look. And it's an issue. And so I, I must humble myself, amen, and understand that I, I, want, I want to respond to God. I want to hear from God, amen. I, I know this is so basic. I'll put you all to sleep. I'm not trying to put... I'm talking to you tonight. Whether you realize it or not, I'm talking to you tonight. Praise God. Now, now there's another area, amen, that uh, uh, causes us not to hear when God speaks to us. Let's go to Exodus 7.22. Most of what I'm going to deal with comes right out of the Old Testament tonight. Amen. Exodus 7.22, the Bible says that, And the magicians of Egypt did so, with their enchantments, okay? They did the same thing that Moses did, okay? And the Bible says, And Pharaoh's heart was hardened, neither did he hearken unto them as the Lord had said. Now, in every verse I'm giving to you, if we had took the time, we could tell you that it, that Hebrew word Shema is encompassed in these verses that we are using tonight. So what happened? So... <clears throat> So Pharaoh watches Moses' rod turn into a snake. It's okay, boys. You've done that trick for me. Show them how you can do that. And they do the same thing. But the neat thing is that Moses' rod swallowed up the other snakes. And I hate snakes, but anyways. And God telling him to grab it by the tail would have been enough for me to say, I think you need to get somebody else to do this job, God. Hallelujah. So now. What I want to point out to you, notice they're magicians. And they work with enchantments. Okay. There are other things that cause us to not hear God's voice. Spiritual darkness claims to be light. All right, do you hear what I just said? Spiritual darkness claims to be light. And it can confuse us when it comes to hearing the voice of the Lord. In 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 12, Paul is having some issues. They don't think he's an apostle, and it just is creating problems. And he, so he says, but what, but what I do, I will also continue to do, that I may cut off the opportunity from those who desire an opportunity to be regarded just as we are in things of which they boast. So there are these pseudo-apostles. And then he says in verse 13, For such are false prophets, uh, pro false apostles, deceitful workers, and look what it says next, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. 
They, they carry the label of being an apostle of Jesus Christ. Verse 14, and no wonder, for Satan himself transforms himself into an angel of light. Now hear me. Amen. Spiritual darkness claims to be light too. Are you hearing me? The Bible tells us to try the spirits. Not every spirit is of God. If you just, if everything that comes down the road, you jump on that bandwagon, you're not really spiritually mature. You need to try the spirits. Not everything that professes to be light is light. The Bible clearly says that Satan transforms himself into an angel of light. Amen. And so he comes and professes to be light. But if you listen to his message, you can hear the darkness in his message. Amen. Jesus, the word of God tells us, his light was the life of men. Amen. The light that Satan will bring to you will lead to death. Hallelujah. Are you with me? Amen. You need to understand these things. So spiritual darkness can keep us from really hearing the voice of God. Why is it we hear these people say, well, God told me to shoot that guy or God told me to kill my kids. Do you really think that was the voice of God that said that? Uh, but they heard a voice. I, I, I'm not going to say they didn't hear a voice. It was not the voice of light. It was the voice of some demonic spirit, amen, that was trying to masquerade as light. And don't sit here and say, well, I'm wise and know all things. All I can tell you is baloney. You don't know as much as you think you know. All right? You really need to get in contact with God. All right, yeah, so come on. Some of you get caught up in stuff, amen. You think you got some revelation from God. I'm asking you a question. Was it God that gave you revelation or was it something else that gave you revelation? What kind of light was it? Are you hearing me tonight? Hallelujah. Okay, I'm back. I'm back. I just had a moment there. He tells us in verse 15, therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also transform themselves into ministers of righteousness, whose end will be according to their works. There's people that use the name of Jesus that are not walking in truth. I happened to see, amen, while I was with picking up my grandkids, they, there was a number of uh, times on television that they actually, they had, it, it looked good, they were talk, it just came up, didn't, didn't advertise any church or anything like that. And basically what they were doing is they were leading people to what they called salvation. Amen. Maybe you have seen it on the TV. I can't even remember what station it was, uh, but I, I just had it on. And, and uh, it was on. In fact, it was on a station. I, I was surprised that it was on. Amen. And uh, and I don't, couldn't tell you what it is. I don't really care. But, uh, but I was amazed. It actually took them through, had them pray, did not, did not use the word sin, but used the word mistakes. If you've made mistakes, it said, you know, and it, it was so nice and uh, comforting and, you know, and, and you understand, ladies and gentlemen, there is only one way to get into the kingdom of God. And it's not accepting the Lord as your personal Savior, which is so much heard in our world today, it's repenting of your sins after you have believed, amen, being buried with him in baptism in the name of Jesus Christ and being filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. But yet there is angels of so-called light in our world, even ministers, okay, that profess light. And maybe I'm, I'm upsetting you tonight, but I got one word for you. You can figure it out. Amen. We have to walk in truth. I remember asking a guy, his name was Louie, and Louie, you know, he was loving God, doing the best he could, amen, and I asked him, can you show me anywhere in the Bible where they actually use the sinner's prayer? He said, I know who you are. And that was his response to me. In other words, really, really, the voice he was listening to was not the voice of God. 
and he thought it was. Now, I'm not pretending to be some great one. I'm just telling you, amen, there is an enemy that is content in deceiving you. You can call on Jesus. Did, did not Jesus himself say in Matthew 7 that they're going to say, Lord, Lord, have we not done these things in your name? Amen. They're going to call on him. They're going to use his name. But he's going to say to them, depart from me, you worker of iniquity. I know you not. So what does it tell you? It tells you that we can sometimes not hear the voice of God. Why? Because darkness also claims to be light. Are, are you with me? All right. All right. Let's go to let's go to Exodus chapter 16. Is this all right? Yeah. Is this, this is so simple tonight. I, I hope, man, you, this is, I know you guys are really, man, this, I know. Anyways, let me just go on. All right. So, they're out in the wilderness. They need to be fed and God's got a plan. This is the thing which the Lord hath commanded, he says. Verse 16 of chapter 16. Gather of it every man according to his eating. And Omer for, for every man, according to the number of your person, take ye every man for them which are in his tents. Verse 17, the children of Israel did so, and gathered some more, some less. And when they did meet it with an Omer, he, had gathered, he that gathered much had nothing over, and he that gathered little had no lack. They gathered every man according to his eating. So you got a big appetite, just get a little bit more. Little appetite, just not so much. All right. And Moses said... Let no man leave it, leave of it till the morning. Then verse 20, notwithstanding, they hearkened not unto Moses, but some of them left of it until the morning, and it bred worms, and it stank, and Moses was ticked at him. Smelling up my encampment. <laughs> so, okay, what are you saying? You see, the reason some people don't hear from God is because they know what's best for themselves. All right. You told us not to gather for the seventh day, or 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 not to store. We all like to store. I got a garage store, and I got a basement that's got stuff in it. And I don't even know what I got. We all got this store thing going on, you know. And so they had it going on too, you know. Okay, I got to, you know. And what God, you know, what God was doing, He say, if you really trust me. You'll just get enough for today. Okay. Well, some didn't buy that. You know, what's, you know what's best for me is, you know, I like to snack at midnight, so I better get some other, some extras left over, you know. But it stank. So one of the reasons we don't hear from God is because we always know what's best for us. The question, the thing is we don't know what's best for us. In Deuteronomy chapter 1, verse 43, amen, this is after, after, okay, the initially said, we can't take the land. There's giants and great cities in the land. And then they all had a fit, and they wanted to stone Moses and Aaron and Caleb and Joshua, and, uh, and God was upset and said, all right, you're not going in. It's amazing. It's amazing how people are. God says, go in, and they say no. And then God says, don't go in, and they want yes. Don't make any sense, but that's, that's humanity. Quite frankly, as a pastor, people sometimes just don't make a whole lot of sense. I brought a lot of response there. All right. And so, verse 43 of Deuteronomy 1 says, So I spake unto you, and you would not hear, and you but rebelled against the command of the Lord, and went presumptuously up into the hill. So, okay. Well, we're doing it now. We, we didn't do it before, but we're doing it now. And well, you're not hearing now because God said no now. Okay? And so they go up against the Amorites, and guess what happens? They, don't, they get chased right down. They get spanked real good. Yes, they do. And verse 45, And ye return and wept before the Lord, but the Lord would not hearken to your voice, nor give ear unto you. So, the attitude of I know what's best for me is an attitude that you really got to get rid of. It's, it's really steeped in pride. You know, we have to ask ourselves the question, how much do we really consult God? We claim to trust him. We, 
We can quote the scripture, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not on thy own understanding. Well, most of us know that scripture. But how much do we really trust him? How much do we say, you know what, God, this is what I, I want to do. But you know what? I really want to talk to you about this before I go in. No, we, we go into it with, I know what's best for me. I know how to take care of myself. I don't need any help. And literally what we do, we cut God out of the picture. And that's why many times we get issues. I'm not asking you to raise your hand, but I, I would have to raise my hand on this one. I thought to myself, why did you get yourself into this thing, buddy? I'll tell you why I got into it, because I didn't really talk to God. I thought I had the answer. It's best for me. And it wasn't best for me, and I found out later it wasn't best for me. Hallelujah. Now, the next one may seem to be a little unique. Exodus chapter 20. The Bible says, this is when they're at Mount Sinai. Said unto Moses, speak thou with us and we will hear, but let not God speak with us lest we die. And Moses said unto the people in verse 20, fear not for God has come to prove you and that his fear may be before your faces that ye sin not. And the Bible says the people stood afar off. And Moses drew, drew near unto the, in, unto the thick darkness where God was. So Israel, it, it looks good. They, they feared the greatness of God. But basically what they were saying is God is unapproachable. And therefore, because he's unapproachable, you go talk to him. And you come back and tell me what I'm supposed to do. You understand? And that's why people don't hear from God because... They feel God is unapproachable. You know, and, and, and I'm, I'm here to, brothers and sisters, you can talk to God. You can hear from God. God is as close as the mention of his name. And the Bible says, I am to boldly come before his presence. I am to come before the throne of grace to obtain mercy in the time of need. But, but sometime, well, you know, I, I think there's probably more to the issue, but we're, we're not going to try to go into it tonight just to say, Reason some people, let me just say this much, sin can become an obstacle. Now, amen, so some people say, you, you go talk to God. All right, so they don't hear from God. Now, First Samuel chapter 3, we're, we're going to spend some time here. This is where my grandson and I were spent time today, chapter 3. We talked a little bit about Hannah and uh, Paniah and Elkanah today and the fact that Elkanah had two wives, and uh, and my grandson was wise enough to know that having two wives ain't a good deal. It may sound like a good deal, but it ain't a good deal. Two for the price of one. All here's here's the answer, grandson. Run. Poor lady sitting here. But would you want two husbands? Dear God in heaven. Absolutely not. Somebody get killed in the first week. So, anyways, so 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 Israel is not hearing from God. In fact, the Bible will tell us in this chapter, chapter three, that the word of God was rare or precious. There was not much being said by God. What was happening? Eli himself was a righteous man. But he had sons that were sons of Belial, um, men that had got themselves uh, into just some terrible sins and very selfish and that type of thing. And, uh, and Hannah had prayed. There's a message in a woman that prays, man. You want to change something, ladies? Just pray. Just pray. You, you got to understand. Now, I'm not, I'm not talking about these nice little neat prayers. Hannah prayed and Eli thought she was drunk. So that suggests to me that the prayer was more than just a folding of the hands and saying nice things to God, you know, and a little tear trickling down the, down the face. She prayed until the man of God thought she was drunk. So you just put your little spin on that if you'd like to. God hears her. That's what Samuel means, to, he, to hear Okay, and so he comes to the house of God. He's a young fellow. Mama brings a 
a linen ephod to him every year. You, you know it. You know now, or you should know that he's a from the tribe of Levi. He's a Kohathite, okay, and uh, and he just he's he's around the temple or the, the tabernacle, watches Eli, Amen. Does what he can to serve and minister to the man of God. The Bible says in verse three that the the lamp of God was about to go out, and Samuel had laid his head down to sleep. And God called him. Okay. But he didn't know it was God, as many of you know. But I, I like what he, he says, here am I. Let, let, me, let me just tell you something, ladies and gentlemen. You want God to work through you, then make yourself available. All right? Not this, do I have to? Can't you find somebody else? No, no, that's, that's below me. I, I can't start there. I can't do that. Man, I, I should be running the show. Or run your own show. I'm sorry. All right. And so he ran to Eli, and, and, and he said, did you call me? And he said, no. And this will happen three times. Now, I want to point something out to you. If you really want to do God's work, and you miss it the first time, God's not going to quit on you. Three times, three times, God calls Samuel. You know, in our world today, three strikes and you're out. Well, it's not, that's not in God's kingdom. It's not like that in his kingdom. Three times he doesn't understand. Why? Because he's inexperienced. He is the only voice he knows is the voice of Eli, who is like his pastor. And so the voice he thinks, this is Eli calling me. My pastor. And no, it's not your pastor, son. And by the fourth time, Eli realizes that it's God. All right. Amen. I just, we, we just, some of you, you've missed it. And you quit. Why? I, I, I would not, listen. I'm going to tell you right now. Those of you that have said, well, I, did, I messed up. Gifts of the Spirit, well, I messed up, so I'm not going to pursue what God wants to use me for. Why? I ask you, why? Three times, Samuel didn't, Understand it was God that was trying to speak to him. Okay? Or maybe you got the attitude that Moses got. When he says to God, after a burning bush and a voice speak out of the bush, God, I can't speak. Send somebody else. And that's when the Bible says that God became angry with Moses. So whatever you, you don't want that send somebody else deal going on in your life. You want to be used of God Get, get in the work of God. Amen. Do it. it may be a small task. Do it with a grateful and a smiling, amen, face. Hallelujah. Some people do stuff and they're grumpy and moaning and groaning. Man, and you just want them to leave. Just go home. And, I, and they're happy to go home because they really didn't want to do anything in the first place. All right. So he's an experience and he doesn't know. But God, God knows. Now, I'll point out something here. That the first, time, first two times, the third time actually, Eli did not know it was God. But the Bible clearly says to us that Eli perceived that it was God that was speaking. So, sometimes even your pastor is not going to have it the first time. Would you allow your pastor to pray and seek God for an answer? Or we live in such an age we got to have answers today. Or, or I should have had this answer yesterday. Do, do you want to hear from God? Do you, do you want your pastor to hear from God? Our decisions are so important today. And so we need to, we need to hear from God. Amen. And so Eli tells him, you go lay down and when you hear him again, you know, again, uh, if he calls you, just speak, Lord, speak, Lord, for your servant hears. 
Hallelujah. And that's what happens. So inexperience sometimes can hinder us from hearing the voice of God. Remember this. If God's talking to you, he's got something he wants to say to you. And he's not, even if you don't understand and you mess up, he's not going to just run away. Hallelujah. Aren't you glad of that tonight? Aren't you glad of that tonight? Hallelujah. I want to just point out one more thing about what happens, why people don't hear from God or don't respond to God. And it's one of the most sad depictions you'll ever read in the scripture, and that's in 1 Samuel chapter 15. It's just it's sad. An anointed man who's head and shoulders above everybody else in the kingdom of Israel, who was chosen by God with the prophet Sam, who, if you read his beginning, it just looks so good. I mean, he's prophesying with the prophets. He's concerned about his father, amen, because he hasn't been able to find the donkeys. And, and then, I mean, God, if you, if you read the story, it's just, there's more than once. I mean, it's evident that it's God. If you read the story, I mean, it, you, the, the donkeys have been found. Your father's not worried about you. That was somebody else telling him that. And he meets some men on the way home, and amen, and, and, and it's described to him. What a, what a marvelous beginning. But again, amen, Saul's verse 20. Saul said to Samuel, Yea, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord. Well, the truth was he hadn't. But here's the real problem. Self-deception. It's the real problem. For, uh, for Saul would say, I've done all God commanded me. And, and basically, in our vernacular, Samuel says to him, shut up. I hear the sheep, and I hear the cows. You ain't done everything that God commanded you to do. All right? Why? Because there's rebellion in the heart of Saul. Okay, in verse 22, because he makes the excuse, well, we brought these animals for sacrifice. And verse 22, Samuel says, Hath the Lord a great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Okay. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and hearken than the fed of rams. Offer a thousand animals to God. And if you're not obeying God, he doesn't accept any one of those animals. As a sacrifice. And then he says in verse 23, which is irony here, by the way, for rebellion is as a sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is as the iniquity and idolatry. Because I was rejected the word of the Lord, the Lord's rejected you. The irony of this is, if you read the story, you know that Saul had driven out every witch out of Israel. And God says to him, all right, you drove the witches out, but don't you understand that your rebellion is like the sin of witchcraft. Ladies and gentlemen, we don't want a rebellious heart because a rebellious heart will keep us from hearing from God. All right, all right, so let, let's get some positive things going here. I want to wrap this thing up so we all can go home. All right, so what happens when I listen to God? All right, let's go back to 1 Samuel chapter 3. Amen, verse 15. This has probably happened to some of you here. He's just, God talks to him. God gives him a message. And the Bible says in verse 15, And Samuel lay until the morning and opened the doors of the house of the Lord, and Samuel feared to show Eli the vision. I really don't think that Samuel probably went back to sleep that night. I think God messed up his sleep pattern bad. I think he probably just probably just like you and I would do, how am I going to say what God wants me to say to the man of God, Eli? How do I say it? I'm sure he may have thought, you know, come on, we all do it. We think of ways to figure it out. Okay, if I approach it, now that wouldn't work. How about if I, no, I'm not sure about that. And we just, you, you know, we run those scenarios through our mind. And before we know it, or the, the night gets extremely long. And we, we just can't wait for morning. Because something about morning will just give us understanding. At least we think so. And so that's what he does. He goes all night. But you know what he does? At the urging of the man of God, he gives to Eli the message. In verse 19, I want you to see this. The Bible says, And Samuel grew, and the Lord was with him, 
and did not let none of his words fall to the ground. He was on his way to be one of the greatest prophets that Israel ever knew. Why? Because when he did hear God, he didn't change the message. He didn't squash the message. He didn't hide the message. He declared the message. And the Bible tells us that Samuel grew because the Lord was with him. And what he spoke came to pass. Ladies and gentlemen, amen. If we will just listen to God, hear God, we are going to grow, amen, and God is going to use us to speak things, amen, amen, and our words will not fall to the ground. Hallelujah. In Genesis chapter 22 and 18, are you still with me? Is this, is this too much? Should I, should, I, should I just wrap it up here? Genesis 22 and 18, amen. The uh, old, old brother Abraham, he's gone to offer his son as a sacrifice, and God has stopped him. And, and the Bible says in thy seed, verse 18, Shall all the nations of the world be blessed because thou has obeyed my voice? What, what, what's this deal about obeying God? It brings blessing. Not just to us, but to those around us. When you hear God and you obey God, it brings blessing. That's what happens when you listen to God and you obey God. Amen. In Exodus chapter 15 and verse 26, amen, God says to the Israelites, if thou wilt diligently hearken, if you will listen to me, if you will obey the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. Well, amen. Do you want to be healed? Why don't you just listen to God and obey God? Some of us are not here because we ain't listening. Because he still is the Lord that heals. And yes, I, I don't want to get into, amen, what's that, Pavlo's dog and all that kind of business. It ain't about, amen, you know, hold the little doggy biscuit out there and the dog does his tricks, rolls over and plays dead, bang, you know, all that kind of stuff. No, amen, it's simply God appreciates people that obey Him and love Him. And He really is a God of generosity. And He really is a God that wants to bless His people. He really does want to do those things. But, but sometimes we're so disobedient, He can't do it. And He'd keep us from a lot of stuff if we would just listen, obey Him, and follow Him. Hallelujah. For He still is the Lord that healed. So, Amen. That's one reason why it's good to listen to God and obey God. Hallelujah. All right. Amen. And then in Exodus 19, he says in verse 15, Now therefore, if you'll obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then he says, You shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people. Hallelujah. And then he says in verse 6, You shall be a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. All you got to do is obey me, hear my voice, keep my commandments, keep my covenant. You're a special people to me. You understand that we're his special people today. But that does not exempt us from, amen, you know, some of us want to do our own thing. You know what special people do that love God? They obey God. In fact, if you really want to be a witness for God, you will obey God. Because that's, that's how God operates. God never operates through disobedience. He operates through obedience. You need to understand that. If you don't understand that, why don't you read Philippians chapter 2, verse 6 through 9. And maybe that will help you a little bit. And if you don't like that one, you can always go to Romans chapter 5 and read verse 12. And then go down to about verse 19 and just pick up and see how much God appreciates obedience. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Brothers and sisters, we are a special people. But it's not something you just take for granted. Hallelujah. I was a foolish young man. I could have learned the, the carpentry trade real easy. Why? Because my father would have taught me. But I was so ignorant. The round basketball meant more to me than learning something. The football meant more to me than learning something from my father. And I tried to figure out every way I could to keep from 
learning. And so I didn't learn. I didn't realize what kind of special treasure I had within my grasp. Do you understand how special you are to God? And that if you will just walk with him and obey him and listen to his voice, or God will speak to you. He's going to draw you close to himself. You are going to feel that you are special. All right? Are you still in the house? Is this okay? Have I gone too long? I'm about ready to wrap it up here. In Exodus chapter 23, God says to Israel, this is again about hearing God and obeying God, but if thou shalt in, indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak, then it, look what it says, then I will be an enemy unto thine enemies and be an adversary unto thy adversaries. You understand? If you hear God and obey God, you got God with you. Now you want a New Testament verse for that? Submit to God. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. You want God to go after your enemy? Submit to God. And he'll go after your enemy. And your enemy is a frightened of God. In fact, the Bible says you believe in one God, they'll do as well. The devils also believe and they tremble. And I always like that part, they tremble. I hope his knees are knocking right now. Hallelujah. And by the way, I want him to know that one angel is going to put him in a bottomless pit. And after a thousand years, he's going to get out for a little while. And then he's going to the bad place and he's not going to ever get out again. Hallelujah. And I'm going to be so happy when it's all done. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. So you're having trouble with the enemy. Just remind him what's going to happen to him. Hallelujah. You're going to heaven. He's going to the bad place. Hallelujah. That's where he belongs. All right. Deuteronomy 4, verse 30. It says this. When thou art in tribulation. Anybody here being tested, going through struggles? Any, I don't raise your hand. I know there are people here. When thou art in tribulation and all these things are come upon thee, even in the latter days, if thou turn to the Lord thy God and shall be obedient unto his voice, for the Lord thy God is a merciful God. He will not forsake thee, neither destroy thee, nor forget the covenant of thy fathers, which he swore unto thee. What's he saying here? You bloated, it, you messed it up, you big time just just. Well, and you got problems. If you will just be obedient to God, He's not going to forsake you. If you just turn to God, He's not going to forsake you. Are you still with me? I, I'm, I'm, about, I'm about done. I'm about done. I'm about done. God bless them, God. Help them. Deuteronomy 11, 27, 28, just quickly. Okay, it says, A blessing if you obey the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you this day, and a curse if you do not obey. So obedience brings blessing to me. That's if I hear and listen to God. Hear, O Israel, the Lord, I got the Lord's one. Malachi chapter 3, verse 10. It says, bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that, they may be meat in, that there may be meat in mine house. And probe me now herewith with the Lord of hosts, if I will not open the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, and there shall not be in room enough to receive it. All right, now hear me. The reason people don't tithe is because their faith is weak. My wife and I have tithed. In fact, I started to tithe when I was. That's for a whole job. Hallelujah. Start your kids off young. Don't wait until they're 18. So, okay, by the way, don't forget to tithe. You, they earn some money in your house. So, okay, this goes to God. This is, you understand? That's how it starts. That's how it starts. It really does. That's how it starts. Well, man, you only got 10 bucks. Well, first of all, that money is not going to mean as much to him as it does to you, apparently. Because nine is better than none, you understand, when you're a kid. But the Bible teaches us that God responds to those who obey him. He blesses those. And by the way, I want you to know something tonight. If you're not tithing, God's not going to rebuke the devourer. And you're going to have a whole lot of stuff. You know what? The money's going to leave your, your hand one way or the other. Give it to God. He'll bless you. Hang on to it. Oh, it's going to leave your hand. 
Car's going to break down. Something else is going to happen. My God, you're going to wonder, can I make my, can I make this stretch to the end? You know, you know what some people do? They, they, they put God at the end of the list. Is that, is that how you pray too? God, put me at the end of the list. No, when we got a prayer need, God's at, God, you got to hear what I'm saying to you now. You really got to work. And, and, and then, you, well, you put me at the back of the list, so I'll get to you sometime. Oh, no, I don't want him getting to me sometime. I want him getting to me like now. You understand? I'm just, I'm just telling you. you got to, you got to think biblically. Well, I speak in tongues. I don't care how much you speak in. Let, let, me, let me just surprise you. You can speak in tongues and go to hell. I don't know if that surprised you or not. Why? Because once you've got the Holy Ghost, you've been coming to God's presence, it's a whole lot easier to yield and surrender for a moment. You better pray, if, amen, that that moment that you're speaking in tongues, when he's come, if you ain't obeying him in other areas. Oh God, I want to be speaking in tongues when you come. I, I, I'd like to do that too, but I just may be sleeping when he chooses to come. You understand? Are you still with me? Am I, am I getting off on the... I'm, I'm just talking to you tonight. Hallelujah. All right. So now I'm coming home. I try to meddle. I'm trying to help us, okay? All right, now. 1 John chapter 4. I am coming home. 1 John chapter 4. John, who is an apostle, says this. We are of God. Okay. Then he says, he that knoweth God hears us. So, again, this validates the message of the apostles. So if you really are of God, you will hear the message that the apostles preached. And then he goes on, He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby know we the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. To have the spirit of truth is you will hear the message from the word of God that the apostles preached. Now, now, Seven times in Revelation, which is the book of the end, the revelation of Jesus Christ, the things that are to come. Seven times when it addresses the churches in chapter 2 and 3, we hear words, He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit says to the church. Seven times, seven times God is trying to reach his church. Do you understand the day we live in, ladies and gentlemen? Do you understand that there's never been a day like this in America's history before? Never. Do you understand how blessed of God we have been? How that America has been the platform which evangelism, missionaries have gone around the world. But I'm here to tell you right now, when the Supreme Court ruled how they ruled, it was the death knell for America. I'm not trying to be melodramatic. I'm just telling you, you need to understand that. America's not going back to where it was. I don't know what's going to happen to us, but I can tell you this. I know what God did to Sodom. And you know God would have to repent to Sodom if he doesn't judge America. Do you know God's not an American? He'll have no problem judging us. We'll have the problem, but he won't. And so in this hour, we as believers have to hear what the Spirit is saying. To the church. This is an hour where we need wisdom. We need that we need the love of God. Don't you go out there and make fun of some gay lesbian. Don't do those things. That that's ignorance. That that's not of God. Pray for them. Love them. They are blind. Amen. They are really blind. Amen. Don't don't get in this high and mighty, lofty attitude. That's not what you're to do. We need to hear from the Spirit of God. 
He that hath an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. There's been a rush of his Spirit even into this room right now. He wants us to hear him. Amen. I know that there's reasons why people don't hear, and I know that there's blessings that come from hearing God. But above all things in this hour, we need to have the wisdom. We need to hear what God would say. Revelation 3 and 20. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come into him and dine with him and he with me. Above all things tonight, I want a relationship with him. I've got to hear him on, at the door. I've got to open the door. I've got to be willing to sit down with him. I've got to be willing to dine with him. And if I will do those things, I'm going to overcome. And I'm going to be granted the right to sit with him on his throne. If I will hear my God. This is why when we gather together in church, listen to me, brothers and sisters. The, pre the pastor, the preacher, has the responsibility to get the message of God that the church needs to hear. He needs the anointing of God on him. But do you understand tonight, ladies and gentlemen, that there is a congregational anointing? Do you understand that you have a responsibility to be anointed to hear, or be anointed to respond? I now understand why there have been times that I preached to a wall. Because that day, the congregation was an anointed. Notice I put it on the congregation, not on me. Amen. Church, you come in here a lot of times and the volume of your fellowshipping is very loud. And when you pray, the mice make more noise. Understand what I'm saying? It's, this is a day to pull out all the stops and to hear what God is saying. Why? Because, ladies and gentlemen, it's wrapping up. I'll never forget the words of my father. He said, when you see, when you see what's going on in our streets today, when Sodom's in the street, know that the coming of the Lord is near. Now, he didn't live to see this day. He, he died just 13 years ago. I think he'd probably be a little shocked to see where we're at today. We're living it, ladies and gentlemen. We're living it. In fact, if you're, if you're following stuff, there are states that are literally fighting against the ruling of the Supreme Court right now. There are, there are states that are saying, we don't like this. We don't accept this. Uh, but that's, it's a spiritual battle. And ladies and gentlemen, you're not going to like what I'm going to say next. We brought this on ourselves. Hallelujah. All right, let's end this thing. Philippians 1 9. This is it. I'm, I'm done after. I'm done after this. I really am. So Paul writes to the Philippian church, verse 9. He says, And, I, and this I pray that your love may abound still more and more in knowledge and all discernment. Hallelujah. That you approve the things with, that are excellent, that you may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ, and that you be filled with the fruit of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ to the glory and praise of God. We need to abound in love. We need to abound in knowledge. We need to abound in discernment. We need to be without offense. We need to do things that are excellent, be approved in all excellent things. A stand tonight. If we will listen to God, God will bless this body. If we'll, now, I'm listening is more than just, remember, it's obeying, it's responding, it's doing. I'm telling you that if we will listen to God, God will do incredible things amongst us. If we listen to God, if we'll get a voice that will. In fact, may I say, most of us here have lost loved ones. And if we're not here, this is going to be ugly. And if we're not hearing the voice of God, their chances of being saved are pretty nil. Because if God's people can't hear, 
What's the sinner going to do when God's people aren't listening to him? My God. So, for the importance of my family, one of the things, this is, I'm not bragging when I say this tonight. I have the respect of my family. Every last one of them respect me. They may not do what I do, but they respect me. And there's a reason they do that. It's because I live in front of them what I'm supposed to be. You understand? I don't take Jesus off when I walk out of the doors of this building. Listen, I'm an ambassador. Okay? You're an ambassador. I, I'm, I am coming to close. Our king is coming. And when he comes, they will not be saved. After he comes, the hope is now. Understand? Now. So I got to live right in front of my family. I got to hear God's voice. I got to respond to God. Hallelujah. I got to be kind and loving to them. My God. But, uh, but they need God. You see, here's, I feel the weight many times on my back. It's the weight of judgment, not a judgment for me but a judgment for my family and for my world. And I sometimes feel, it's, it's just, I, you may not understand what I'm saying, but amen, there's just, I know what's coming behind me. And I know that when it happens, it's not going to be reversible. And so Paul would say that we're ambassadors of Christ. We're here to warn our world, to warn our family, our friends. But if we're not hearing the voice of God, if we're not listening to God, my God, what are we going to do? Let's just take a moment right now and let's just pray. God, give us discernment, understanding, knowledge. My God, help us all in this room to be, amen, examples to our family, our friends. Oh God, I know some situations are very difficult, God. But help us always to do our best to be right. Right in our attitude and right with our words. Right with our actions. My God. Help your love to flow through us, God. Help me to hear your voice. Help me to hear your voice, God. I know what I mean by that, Father. I mean to obey it. To obey. You see, it took three times for Samuel to understand that voice that was talking to him was God's voice. Then he was instructed to say to you, speak, Lord, for your servant hears. And that's the attitude that I want to have in this day. Oh, God, help us as believers to be sensitive to the Spirit of God every day, in every way, God, in the name of Jesus. Our families are lost without you, Jesus. People that we love dearly, people that are precious to us, God. Oh, God, help us, God, to hear your voice. My God, the message that Samuel had that day for Eli was not a message that he wanted to give. But he gave the message, and Eli respected the words of God and what he heard. Hallelujah. Oh, God, help us, oh, God. Amen. To measure our words according to your spirit, not according to our pride or, or our in intellect or, amen, all of our knowledge of the Bible. Help us to measure our words by your spirit, God. For your word actually says, the letter kill it, but the spirit giveth life. And so, God, help me to measure my words and let me speak words of the Spirit. My God, my God, my God. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus. <clears throat> One of the most precious moments to me on June the 2nd, when I'm laying in a hospital bed, I had a roar in the emergency room, and they've told me that I've had a heart attack. And it's having my nephew and niece sit there and I had an audience that was willing to listen to me and I quite frankly took advantage of it I talked to them I told them don't let bitterness destroy your life because they've had some bitter things happen don't let it destroy you don't let unforgiveness be in your heart you gotta get rid of it hallelujah and they didn't say, we don't love you. No. It was just, thank you, God. You had to lay me in a bed. 
Hallelujah. It made me go through all that mess. But I had a chance to talk to my niece and my nephew. Praise God. People that have been around God in the past. Hallelujah. God bless you tonight. Good to be with you. Sorry if uh, I haven't been able to raise my voice too much here, but amen. Or maybe a little bit. But God bless you. Hug somebody. Somebody needs prayer. Pray with them before you go home. God bless you.